We don't have a cut in. Are we live? <laughs> we are live. Hi. Live, yeah. Welcome to uh, Columbia Daily Tribune newsroom on election night. Uh, it's, a, it's about 9.30, a little after, and uh, we're starting to get some of the earlier returns back from Boone County Clerk, but this is kind of a slow process. Uh, I am the Associate City Editor, Madeline LaRue, with me is the City Editor, Matt Sanders, to talk a little bit about what we've kind of been seeing and hearing so far and the results that we've gotten in so far, which hasn't been much yet. It's kind of a slow process for the Boone County Clerk, right, Matt? Yeah, oh yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a long night. Uh, really, the presidential results have kind of been coming in a lot faster than our local results, uh, which we expected this, you know, um, the Boone County Clerk, Wendy Norrin, she takes her time to make sure that, uh, that the counting is done right, uh, you know, which is certainly appreciated. We want an accurate vote count. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it makes it go a little longer than we expected. There was, um, I know that the, uh, that the clerk's office was in contact with the Repub some people in the Republican Party. Uh, the Republicans are over at the Holiday Inn uh, Executive Center. Uh, the clerk's office was in contact with some people from the Republican Party, asked for a, an extra couple of election judges to come in as reinforcements uh, because, you know, the counting was a very large task. So, yeah, I think that maybe uh, slowed things down a little bit that they needed to bring some more people in. Um, before, yeah. before you continue, uh, mm -hmm. for people who don't really know the process, why mm -hmm. do they need the Republican election judges to be there? Well, you have Republicans and Democrats to ensure a, uh, a fair counting process. Uh, basically, that way they can kind of monitor each other. And uh, apparently, the, um, our clerk's office has a system where they split the passwords between election judges and the two parties. That way, no one party can get in and access the, uh, the vote counting machines on their own. So... Uh, you need Republicans and Democrats both for that. Uh, so yeah, it, you know, it uh, takes a, a little bit longer, but uh, we maintain pretty good election integrity here in Boone County. Now, as of the last count, uh, the last group of votes was counted up at about and published online at about 8.49 p.m. And I'll just go down the races, down the ballot here, and these are Boone County votes only, keep in mind. So we have uh, in the presidential race here in Boone County, uh, Hillary Clinton had a pretty large lead over Donald Trump, 56.5% to 36.7%. Um, that was with 14 of our 86 precincts reporting. Uh, likewise, Jason Kander, the Democrat, re led incumbent Republican Roy Blunt in the U.S. Senate race. Uh, Chris Coster was in the lead for governor. Um, Russ Carnahan, the Democrat for Lieutenant Governor, and on down the list with the state races uh, here in Boone County, Democrats have taken all of them so far. Um, in the uh, 4th Congressional District, uh, the Democrat is in the lead in Boone County, Gordon Christensen, uh, over incumbent uh, Vicki Hartzler. However, when you look at the whole district, which includes 24 counties, Hartzler has a commanding lead, one that Christensen really is not going to be able to overcome. Uh, in the 19th Senate District uh, in Boone County, uh, Stephen Weber has a pretty, had a pretty healthy lead over Caleb Rowden, but that, that isn't necessarily reflective of the complete race because you also have Cooper County in there. Um, now, Cooper County's votes, some of them are coming in. I don't know if they're all in yet, but uh, of course there are more Boone County votes to be counted in that race. Um, in the legislative races, uh, among Boone County votes, you have Democrats in the lead in all of those except one, and that is the 44th District, uh, where Sheree Reich leads Tom Pauley. Um, but, of course, the only votes counted in this latest update in that were absentee ballots. So we're yet to see what any of the actual precincts from the 44th have to say about that race. So that's very much still in the air, and that's one that's really tightly contested. Um, so, you know, things are still forming tonight. We've got a long way to go, and we really won't know uh, results for these for a while. Um, I almost forgot the county commission races. In those races, uh, we have Democrats in the lead in both, uh, with seven out of 47 precincts in in the Southern District race. Democrat Brianna Lennon uh, has 53.4% of the vote compared to Republican Fred Perry's 46 now, again, 7 of 47 precincts in, that one could still easily swing 
either way, in the Northern District where incumbent Democrat Janet Thompson is uh, going up against uh, a challenge by Republican Brendan Riddles. Thompson is in the lead 60.4% to Riddles 396 so that one is, you know, a little bit more solid, but again, still yet a lot of precincts to go. Only 18.6 of the precincts in that district are in, so it could still swing either way, too. Basically, what we're telling you guys is we don't know a whole lot just yet. <laughs> still um, too early. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, but we do have, we have reporters at the Republican Watch Party at the Holiday Inn Executive Center. Uh, we have a reporter at the uh, Democratic Watch Party at the Blue Note. Um, I know that we've been stopping in. Fred Perry is having his own watch party in a separate location. Uh, we've been visiting him. Of course, Democrats are out there, uh, or I'm sorry, <laughs> photographers are out there. Of course, Democrats are out there. Photographers are out there at all of the parties too, getting some images. Uh, we're updating our website as these votes come in. Uh, but again, we're, we're kind of in waiting mode a lot of the night, uh, though we hope that now that it's getting a little later, some results will start pouring in a little bit quicker and we'll have some more to report soon. That's our hope anyway. Well, and that's kind of something that a lot of people might not know. They might think a newsroom is a really hectic place after the polls close, but in reality, it's a lot of waiting around. Mm -hmm. It gets hectic, yeah. but not until kind of the very end yeah, almost. Yeah, certainly. Uh, like right now, um, you can't really <laughs> see much of the newsroom behind us, but Except, <laughs> yeah, except for us, it is pretty much empty, and that's because our reporters are out at the watch parties so that they can actually be out there talking to people, observing how things are going. Um, they're updating stories remotely. We're updating stories here uh, on our website here from the office. Uh, so, yeah, right now it's, it's just kind of, you know, waiting for things to develop, and then as the night goes on, it, get, it ramps up in intensity, you know, as, as the polls... Well, as all the votes come in, things get really, really busy for us at that time, and, and the reporters are coming back in and filing stories, and you know, then we are posting more frequent website updates. So, um, yeah, we're we're kind of waiting for the the big uh, the big wave to come in, which will be hopefully happening before most people go to bed. <laughs> we would like it that way, but we Certainly. never can get a guarantee on that. Uh, if you had any experiences, any questions, any thoughts about today's election, we want to know. Leave a comment on our broadcast. Use the hashtag Boone Votes. Uh, send it to us on Twitter, on Facebook. Send us an email. Leave a comment on our website. Give us a call. There's just countless ways to reach us, and we want to hear from you and uh, hear about your experience at the polls. So let us know and make sure that you keep checking on our Twitter, on our Twitter feed, on our Facebook page. We'll be putting updates throughout the night. And although Matt mentioned earlier that uh, Hillary Clinton was in the lead in Boone County, but Donald Trump has already been declared the winner for Missouri mm -hmm. overall for the yeah. Missouri electoral votes. So, you know, Boone County is a little more Democratic than the state tends to be, and that race has actually already been called for Missouri. Mm -hmm. So yep. we'll our, be waiting. <laughs> our 10 electoral votes, it looks like, are going to Donald Trump. All the major media outlets now are, are calling that. Um, so that one looks like it's, it's pretty much locked up. Uh, you know, uh, one of the big stories today, of course, not just here but around the country, has been turnout. Mm -hmm. um, and here we finally, at about, well, right, right after 7 p.m., when all of the ballots were in and delivered to the county clerk's office, we found out, you know, just what our turnout was here. Uh, we ended up with a little more than 79,000 votes cast, not counting the absentees. Now, the absentees were several thousand themselves which would push us over the 80,000 projection uh, from uh, Wendy Noren's office. So we had a very healthy turnout, it looks like. Um, That's you know, huge. That's, I mean, from yeah, what I've seen, yeah. I think in the August primary, we had under 30,000 voting. So we did. We that's did. quite a jump in just a few months. Yeah. And I'm, you, you could safely say that the presidential race is, yeah. you know, largely responsible for the extra turnout. Um, you know, a lot of the voters that our reporters were talking to this morning were most eager to talk about the presidential race mm -hmm. uh, and how they voted in that and why they voted a certain way. Um, you know, they, they had some things to say about local races, but really it was Trump-Clinton. You know, that, that race has caught everyone's attention. It has very much been polarizing for our country, honestly. And, uh, you know, people have very strong feelings about it. So it really motivated a lot of people to go out to the polls. Um, that said, of course, 
local candidates, candidates in local races, they get a little bit of a boost in terms of just sheer voting numbers mm -hmm. from that. Uh, when you have people showing up to vote on the presidential election, they're likely to fill out all the ovals down their ballot, whether they fill them all out for one party or not. So, of course, you're getting a lot of votes cast in our local races, but make no mistake, the primary thing driving so many people to the polls today has been the presidential race. Um, and even with those large numbers of people, we've had really relatively few reports of any problems at Boone County polling places. Mm -hmm. Um, there were some long lines this morning, uh, you know, some people, I know that Rudy Keller, at, went, he went to the Knights of Columbus Hall this morning, he said that uh, some people were telling him they were waiting for about 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably the longest wait that we heard about, though, you know, we were hearing about waits in the area of 15 to 30 minutes being pretty common. Uh, I know that when I went to vote this afternoon at about it was almost five o'clock. I probably only waited five minutes or so. Oh, so wow. by that time, it had calmed down a lot. I think most people got out early in the morning and cast their ballots so that they could get it out of the way and then go to work and do whatever. So, uh, you know, later in the day, the lines seemed to uh, get a lot shorter. Voting went a little bit quicker, but still yet, you know, we did, we did hit right at that 80,000 mark that the clerk was predicting. So it's a, it's a healthy turnout. I don't know if it's historic or not, but uh, uh, we'll have to look into the archives and see what percentage wise we had in other elections. Cause of course, four years ago, eight years ago, we didn't have the same number of registered voters. Okay. So the turnout percentage is going to change given how many registered voters you have. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to look into that a little closer to see if this is a historic turnout. But nonetheless, a very large turnout. You know, it kind of makes you have some hope for American democracy that people <laughs> are actually turning out in those kind of numbers when in a lot of elections we've not had anywhere near that kind of turnout. So It's definitely nice to see a lot of people exercising their right to vote today, yeah. uh, which is always a good thing regardless of what's on the ballot and what way you're voting. We always like to see people exercise that right to vote. Certainly. Some of the things that we heard today from the voters at the polls seemed uh, quite a bit fatigued with the presidential race and kind mm -hmm. of the tone that things had taken. I know our reporters got quite a few uh, to do that and so uh, to basically say that they didn't like what they just had to do in a polling place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of an interesting comment to get on an election day. Yeah, there was one guy at uh, Woodcrest Chapel um, who, that was where Alan Birdziak, our crime and courts reporter, went to survey people this morning and he basically said that he was ashamed of what he just had to do yeah. after he left. He, he didn't give his name, I and mean, that's understandable given his feelings about it. But uh, yeah, he, he, those are the words he used, that he was ashamed of what he had to do. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been an interesting election for a lot of people. I think a lot of people had that feeling of sort of holding their noses as they cast their ballots, you know. And, and, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. We, we had our, the candidates who we had, and we had to cast votes. And so... You know, that's democracy in action, I suppose. And I think the biggest hope is that regardless of the outcome, we can all move forward tomorrow. Yeah. From, <laughs> all, the, from all the angst on Twitter tonight, it's, it's looking <laughs> like it, that might be kind of hard for some folks, but we'll see. I think we'll it'll see. be hard for some folks either way, regardless yeah. of the outcome. So Certainly. it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of work. It's been a very divisive campaign, so Certainly. we'll see how things progress. But. Uh, we'll be in here pretty much for the rest of the night until it's over. Yeah, look for updates on our website, and uh, we're we're hoping to get some live video from the uh, from the watch parties too. Uh, we'll go live on Facebook with some of those later, and hopefully you can tune in for those too. Uh, we expect at some point when enough votes come in for there to be some, you know, maybe victory speeches or concession speeches starting to come in, and we'd like we. And, of course, check our website for updates on those races. Our reporters at the events are uh, live tweeting, so make sure you check our Twitter feed. We'll be putting that stuff out there as soon as we can. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, and uh, continue to watch the Columbia Tribune for... It's going to have a ton more information in depth on a lot of the races that you're looking at. And a commemorative cover That's for right. the presidential race. Mm -hmm. so. so definitely worth picking up. Thank you so much. Thanks.
Is it still going? I don't know. I'm gonna take off my mic either way. Yeah, me too.